uh, to the courts in Pretoria, where our reporter Tumahole Mushlauli is uh, attending the court proceedings today on the uh, Chris Ahani appeal uh, or the, the, the Janus Wallace appeal. Tumahole, a very good morning to you and welcome. A very good morning to you, Elvis. Can you paint us a picture as to what is happening there today? Well, thank you very much, Elvis. Well, uh, today, basically, uh, we are just uh, moments away uh, from uh, the court proceedings uh, beginning here at the Pretoria High Court. Uh, and basically, what is going to happen, uh, it is uh, the state uh, basically looking um, uh, to appeal uh, a decision uh, by uh, the, uh, an earlier decision, rather, um, by uh, the High Court uh, uh, looking to uh, give Janus Walus uh, a parole, saying that uh, he is eligible for parole after spending over 20 years behind bars for uh, the murder of uh, SACP uh, leader Chris Hani. Uh, now, of course, uh, this uh, was met with much outrage and uh, the government, both government and uh, the SACP saying that uh, they would be looking to review this matter, which is ex exactly why we're here in court today. I'm joined now by the SACP's uh, Solima Mapaila, who will just give us more insight into exactly how they feel about this whole process. Mr. Mapaila, uh, we are here in court today. What is your expectation? Well, we are here at the uh, Palace of Justice. We expect nothing less than justice for Chris Hani and his family and the people of South Africa. And we hope that uh, this decision today will restore confidence in the judiciary as the Concord tried to do a couple of weeks ago. And we hope that this should permit across the, the spectrum of the, uh, the, the jurisprudence and the courts that um, societal matters must be handled with sensitivity, with care, and I hope that uh, the judge, who actually was quite insensitive towards the family in the previous case when we were here, will be cordial to the family as well, will be sensitive, and they will be able to use the law to deny this man once again the possibility for him to walk out free after a callous murder he committed against Comrade Hani, in which the presiding officer, presiding judge at his uh, trial court indicated that he deserves the harshest possible sentence permissible by the court, and that's why they gave him a death sentence. And for him to walk free like this will actually undermine the authority of the courts. No, that's correct. And you touched on an issue that uh, both the SACP and uh, um, the late Chris Hani's widow, uh, Medin Pohani, raised uh, in terms of the tone and the language used by uh, the, the judge in the matter, saying that it, perhaps it's time to move on. Um, do you think that uh, the court will be aware of um, the kind of furore and the kind of opposition that statement uh, raised and be looking to correct that? And if not, where to from here? Well, obviously, if um, they, they grant him, uh, they release him, we will appeal. We will take the matter to the appeal court. As you know, today we are appearing before the same judge. This is a matter, but um, we are prepared to take it to the appeals court. Uh, and we'll take it up uh, again from there, possibly, to the constitutional court until we are able to clarify this particular matter so that proper processes, for instance, victim offender dialogue has not taken place in this case. There's no remorse from this perpetrator, but the courts want to create an impression that the family it should actually prove the case of acceptance or forgiveness when actually it's not in their court. The court, the ball is in the court of the perpetrator to prove, to show his remorse, uh, his sense of um, regret so that the family can actually accept uh, what he's saying and we're then able to move on. But before that, that, that can happen, we can't use the law mechanically to make sure that uh, perpetrators of such heinous crimes like uh, this one that killed our general secretary uh, can just, uh, they can just cold-bloodedly kill him and they go scot-free. So that's why we think that uh, justice should prevail in this case. Mm -hmm. Minister Masuta was also uh, very emphatic in that uh, the, the, the right processes weren't followed or weren't exhausted fully in terms of the process of uh, consulting with the family. And he had said that uh, while the state is not opposed to uh, the idea, they just wanted to, the full processes and everyone to be engaged. Do you think that uh, following that process uh, where the family would be engaged, where the SACP would be engaged, um, that uh, this matter can be relooked, or if that's just a formality and as far as you're concerned, uh, this man should uh, stay in prison? Yes, this man should stay in prison. Uh, you remember that ideally this man should not even be in prison by now. If he spoke the truth to the TRC, he would have received amnesty. The TRC, Truth and Reconciliation Commission, 
refused to grant him amnesty on the basis that uh, sufficient uh, possibilities for evidence that existed at the time, he could not respond to very simple questions. For instance, where did they acquire the weapon from? They hid that, 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 that particular fact. And again, uh, that's why the Communist Party has called for a formal inquest into this, matter, into this matter, so that further inquiry can be undertaken by the NPA. And obviously, we agree with me. Minister Masuta uh, is, is quite right. Uh, various uh, aspects of parole legislations have not been followed in this case, just precisely because this man has disdainful attitude, he has disrespect for our constitution, he has disrespect for our country, he has disrespect for, for the family of Hani. He doesn't even care uh, of the consequences of his own action. Previously, actually, when Minister Ndebele uh, was still in charge of the, of, the, of the section, he had actually put in his uh, in, in documents that uh, he wants to be released and leave the country, that I won't even stay in your country for more than three hours if I'm released. That's the level of disrespect this guy has on our uh, uh, country and its people. That is why we feel that uh, justice has to prevail. And that's we're not calling for punishment or anything of that sort. We're just simply calling for fairness and for justice to take its course. Ms. Mapala, we'll have to leave you there. Thank you very much. We'll speak to you as the day goes on. Uh, that was uh, Soli Mapala from the SA Communist Party, uh, basically putting across um, the SACP's position and as well reflecting some of the emotion that has been put across by uh, the late Chris Hani's family and uh, his wife, uh, Medim Pohani. Uh, with that, it's back to you in the studio.